just click everything is okay. Okay, so that's great. Uh, so I'm just gonna share my screen here and we can actually start. So reading part A, like I said, most of you will be familiar with the reading paper. In total, it's uh, an hour long. You've got part A, which is 15 minutes, and then you've got parts B and C, which are together, and these are 45 minutes. Um, part A, once you finish your paper, it's taken away from you. Uh, that is it. It's not like you get your paper back or you can hang on to it. Once 15 minutes is up, your paper is taken and you won't see it again. So part A it is different from parts B and C. In part A, you have four, sometimes three actually, uh, texts, and they're all related to the workplace. They're very short, these texts. Um, there are three types of questions you need to answer, answer matching, short answer, and gap fill. And we'll have a look and we'll practice these questions in today's lesson. This is really important. Your answers should only be taken from the texts, uh, A to D or A to C, if there's only three texts. They must be correctly spelt because you are copying. They do expect you to have the correct spelling. So that's really important. Sometimes people, they, they do all the hard work. They, they, they find the right answers, but they're because you're under pressure, you make mistakes and, and, and you know, people do make spelling mistakes. So you've really got to take care. Make sure um, your words are correctly spelt. The skills that you're tested on are skimming and scanning. Like I said, this is different to parts B and C. In reading parts B and C, that you're tested on different skills, such as reading for detail uh, or where you need to use inference. But these are kind of different skills. In part A, what you need to do is skim and scan. And that's what we're going to practice in this lesson. This is what you'll see on test day. It's just an example. You're going to see something like this. You're, these are the four texts I was talking about. Um, we're going to do a bit of exam practice a bit later on. This is the question booklet, so you'll get something like this on exam day. Um, and you can see here the three types of questions. It starts with matching, then you've got short answer, and then you've got gap fill questions. And we're going to have a look at those in today's lesson. Now, I talked about um, only having 15 minutes to do part A, and in part A, there are about 20 questions. I'm not good at maths, uh, but some people are, and they told me, well, that works out to 0.75 seconds per question. It's less than a minute per question. And that means you've got to work really, really quickly. Part A, it's all about speed. And this is why you need to skim and scan. You don't have time to read every single word. Uh, that's not what they want. And that's really not how to uh, approach the paper. Instead, you're going to be skimming, you're going to be just getting an overview of a text, and you're going to be scanning, you'll be looking for certain words. And that's what we're going to practice. We're going to practice a bit of skimming and scanning. scanning. Um, so to skim, to read quickly, to get a general idea of what a text is about. We're going to do a quick task here. Uh, we're going to do a skimming task, in fact. And you're going to see a text but the heading has been taken away from you. Now you've only got 10 seconds to look at the text and decide what the heading is. It's not a lot of time, 10 seconds, um, but like I said, part A is really about speed and it's about managing your time. So you won't have time to read every single word in the text. What you're gonna do is you're gonna skim read. You're gonna read quickly, just to get a general idea, and then you're just going to quickly write a heading for the text. There are three texts. Okay, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. This is text day, guys, and um, you've only got 10 seconds to look at this and decide what is the title. If you could just write down the title of the text. Okay, that's 10 seconds. Let's go on to the next text. Again, just 10 seconds to skim read this and just jot down, just write down what you think the title is. Okay, 
Okay, and we've got one more. So again, skim read the text. You've only got 10 seconds. Okay. okay, guys, that was difficult. And I purposely made that difficult because that's what you're going to be up against in the exam. Uh, you're really going to be working at speed. Um, so I've put you under pressure uh, intentionally on purpose. So don't worry. I know that was difficult. Uh, it was supposed to be. But let's see how, how you got on. This was the first text. And when you're going to skim read, like I said, you can't read every word. And really what I've done is look at the layout of the text. What I've noticed is that um, I've grouped information together. I can see all of this. It's about antibiotics. They're all different antibiotics. And I see here that there are different decades, different years. And I can kind of see it's progressing 1920, 1930. Also, when I looked at the text, I noted there was a highlighted area. It says here, discovery void. In other words, when antibiotics were not discovered or they stopped being discovered or developed. So really just using that information, the heading of the text is development of antibiotics. And really I got that answer just from looking at the layout of the text. This was the second one. And something else you can do is perhaps read the first sentence rather than read the whole text. If you're not sure what a text is about, sometimes it helps me just to read the first sentence. In this text, it's telling me that in the US, there are more than 80 classes of over-the-counter medications, ranging from acne medicines to weight loss products. Uh, again, I look at the layout and I can see there are some bullet points. All of these bullet points are about medication. As I skim through the text, I just take note of some information which has been grouped together. There's stuff here about shops. Uh, and I can see here there are things about symptoms. And also, really, when I look at the text, what you notice is the repetition. You see certain words are repeated. And I can see OTC, 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 pretty much in three different places in the text. And actually, that's what the title of the text was. It was about OTCs, over-the-counter medications. But again, to skim read, read the first sentence and just look at the layout, bullet points, uh, words grouped together. This was the final text. Once again, you can see the layout. The first thing I notice is that it's three paragraphs. I don't read all three paragraphs. Actually, I only look at the subheadings. All of these have the word interactions and they all have drugs. And that was the title, drug interactions. So I've understood really uh, what the text is about. I kind of get a general idea, really using just the subheadings to, to help me. Okay, so that's a bit of skim reading um, and just reading quickly to get an overview of a text. That's the first thing you need to do in, in reading part A. So skimming and also scanning. So scan this time, you're looking for specific information. You're not reading a whole text quickly. Um, you're actually looking for certain words. We've got a scanning task here, got a couple of questions, um, and then we're gonna move on and kind of look at questions in reading part A. But let's have a look at these. You've got two questions. You're gonna have 10 seconds to find the answer. There's a football team called Brentford. Um, you need to find out what is the Brentford score and which team did they play? You've only got 10 seconds to do this. Okay, good luck. Okay, that was the time. That's your 10 seconds. Uh, I'm just going to move on. Here's the second question. When is the second train from Camden Town? Again, 10 seconds, guys. Okay, 
So this is what you were doing. You were scanning for information. What is the Brentford score? Now, you didn't read everything. You didn't start at the top and just start working your way down. You focused on the word Brentford and you only looked for Brentford and you can find it here. Once you found the word Brentford, then you read closely. So yeah, you can see here, your eyes kind of just follow this, just looking for the word Brentford. Read closely, the score was 2-1, which team did they play? They played Charlton. So what you were doing is you were scanning, you were scanning for the word Brentford. Once you find it, you then read for detail. This is exactly what you'll be doing um, in part A of the reading exam. Yeah, when's the second train from Camden? It's the same kind of thing. First of all, when I know that the answer I need is a time, I've got to scan for information. Well, I looked for the word Camden. Again, I didn't read everything. I just went down. I saw Camden. Once I found it, I looked for the second train and that was the answer, 7.36. Okay, so that was a bit of scanning. We've looked at kind of skimming and we've done a short scanning task. And let's have a look at the question types in the uh, OET uh, reading paper in part A. We looked a little bit at before that the first sort of questions you get are matching questions. You also have short answer questions. And then you, you're going to have to answer gap fill gap questions. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna practice a short answer question. Again, you're not gonna have a lot of time, but you're gonna see a text. You'll have 10 seconds to look at the text. You'll have 10 seconds to answer the question. So what you need to do is you need to skim read the text in 10 seconds, and then you're gonna scan for specific information. Let's have a go. The answers you're gonna write are short answers, so they won't be sentences. You only need to write two or three words, maybe a number, but you won't need to write complete sentences. Okay, so 10 seconds to skim, 10 seconds to scan. Remember, once you've found the word, then just read for detail. Okay, guys, uh, good luck. Okay, just 10 seconds to answer the question. Okay, this is text two. Again, only 10 seconds to skim read. This is your question and you've got 10 seconds to find the answer. Okay, the final text, 10 seconds. Here is your question. Only 10 seconds to find this answer. Okay, it's very, fairly difficult. Again, I've, I've purposely put you under pressure and I've purposely made it difficult because um, it's something you want with your training. You want your training to be difficult. So you're really well prepared for, for the exam. So we are putting you under pressure. Don't worry if you found that difficult. You're, you're supposed to have found it difficult. Let's have a look. Let's see how you got on. Well, with these questions, these uh, short answer questions, you need to be clear on what kind of answer you need. And here it says in which city. So you know that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a city. You need words to scan for. And the word I was looking here, it was insurance company. Um, looking at the text when you skim read, 
Again, the subheadings can help you. Insurance information, the third subheading, that's really what you needed. So once you found that, hopefully your eyes went down into to the bottom of this document. You can see insurance company address. That's exactly what you need. Looking for the word city, and that was the answer, New Haberville. Okay. Text two, um, again, just being clear on the question, it says what, so you know the answer is the thing. When it's a what, it's gonna be a noun. So uh, what needs to be addressed to prevent most CVD diseases? Um, I was looking at the words prevent and I was scanning for the word prevent. Um, and actually in this sentence, you could find the word prevent here. Once I found that it's just really reading closely, read carefully, read for detail. You can see CVD, uh, cardiovascular disease, slightly different. And that's something to be aware of. Um, sometimes it's not exactly the same, the words in the question as in the text. Sometimes you might need synonyms uh, or antonyms, words which are opposites or similar type of words. Also the word addressed became addressing as well, slightly different. The answer, yeah, behavioral risk factors. This was number three, um, as well as institutions where. Okay, so I know the answer is gonna be a place um, and really looking for words to, to scan for antimicrobial stewardship uh, programs uh, being localized to, quite a lot to, to scan for there. But what you notice these antimicrobial um, stewardship or antimicrobial was everywhere, it was all over the text but it was only in one place where you saw it with the program. That's really what I was doing. I was just looking for these words. Once I found it, I read the whole sentence closely. I saw the word localized. I know I've got the right sentence. Uh, the answer was hospitals. Okay. Uh, guys, what we're going to do is practice gap fill questions. So they were short answer questions. This time we've got gap fill questions. So you've got a sentence, it's got a gap. The word has to fit exactly, has to be grammatically uh, correct to fit in the sentence. However, it's a similar kind of thing. You still need to scan. You're still going to look for certain words. So again, it's a similar thing. You're going to have 10 seconds to look at a text. After this, you'll have 10 seconds to scan, to read for detail, to find the answer. And I think there are two or three texts here. Okay, good luck guys. 10 seconds. Okay, new question. Okay, 10 seconds. The second text, just 10 seconds. And your question. Ten seconds to scan. Okay, um, again, fairly quick, um, but really getting you used to kind of working at speed and working under pressure. Let's have a look, see how you got on. This was the first text about osteoporosis. Um, you were looking at um, for a word that fitted in the sentence. You know it's a noun, it's gonna be a thing. If you look closely at the grammar, you notice it's actually a comparative structure. You're comparing DEXA, D-E-X-A, you're comparing DEXA with something else. 
Uh, and all we know it's going to be a thing, it's going to be a noun. So grammatically, you know that's what you're looking for, a noun. Uh, you need words to uh, scan for. The obvious word is DEXA, D-E-X-A, but it's all over the text. It was everywhere. Um, so you really got to take care um, and have a look at the other words here because you've got harder to use and less efficient. And in the, this sentence, it says simpler and less time consuming. So actually what you've got is you've got antonyms. The words are the opposite. Actually this sentence in the question and this sentence in the text have the same meaning. They're just kind of the reverse and it's something to be aware of because sometimes as well as using synonyms, they also use antonyms. Um, and you can see the, the antonym harder to use and simpler. They're kind of like opposites. So the answer was DXR in that text. You had a flow chart with this question. Um, again, you can kind of guess the type of answer. It's going to be a noun. It's going to be a diagnosis or some kind of condition, but you're looking for a thing. You need to find a noun, a condition, um, as they use the word diagnosis. You need words to scan for. Uh, you've got costovertebral, angle pain, and some other symptoms. You can find that information in this box here. And once you do, you just got to read closely. And that was the answer at the bottom. Um, and also this word result in as well. You can see the arrow. So sometimes you're even interpreting symbols as well. Um, okay. So that's essentially what you're going to be doing in the exam. You're going to be uh, skimming a text and then you're going to be scanning, looking for specific information. With all of those questions, you don't have time to read every single word. That's really not what they want. That's not what you're being tested on. That's what you'll be doing in reading part C and also reading part B. But in reading part A, um, that's the thing you don't want to do. You haven't got time to do that. So um, let's have a look at a practice paper. Um, this is called Management of Burn Injuries. In the exam, all of the texts are related. Uh, we'll have a look at how they're organised in a moment, but they're always about the same topic. These texts are about uh, managing burn injuries. This is text A. Again, you don't have time to read everything. You perhaps only want to spend a minute familiarizing yourself with the texts. So you can see text A, and really I'm going to use the heading. This says burn depth. And I'm going to use the subheadings to help me. It says superficial par partial thickness burns, full thickness burns, mixed depth burns. So you've got three different uh, subheadings there. And basically, this is telling me about different types of burns. And that's enough. I don't need to read everything. Just really from using the subheadings, I can understand what this text is about. It's describing different types of burns. It's a little bit like an overview of different burns. Also taking note of the layout, I can see there are some bullet points here. Um, and they're kind of, you've got different kind of description of this full thickness burns. And that's all I'm going to do with this text. I'm not going to read anything more. Go straight on to text B. Again, I'm going to use the heading. You can see here it's about fluid resuscitation. So it sounds a little bit more like uh, treatment. Again, you might want to read the first sentence if you like. Uh, certainly don't read everything, but if you're not sure, you can always read the first sentence. But I'm just going to use the headings to help me. Um, it says here, suggested regime for fluid resuscitation, and then adults and children as well. I can see there are bullet points uh, in the layout. So again, that's all I'm going to do. And I can kind of see fluid resuscitation. This is more about treatment now. Tech C, once again, I'm going to look at the heading. This is about management for burns. Um, and I can see there are numbers that go step by step. It's almost like a procedure telling me how to manage different burns. Um, so that's all I'm going to do. 
Um, I might kind of read one or two points, but I'm certainly not going to read everything. This is text D. Um, and again, you're just going to really look at the, the heading, adult analgesic guidelines. So it sounds a little bit like pain relief here. Uh, I can see that there's a table. I look at the heading of the table, something about a pain score, so different levels of pain. I use the subheadings in the table. It says mild, it says moderate pain, severe pain. If I look at the table, I notice there are some different medications or different drugs uh, for each type of pain. Just at the bottom here, it says pediatric analgesia guidelines. There are different kinds of drugs here. And I'm not really gonna read everything here. I don't, really don't need to, but I just really want an idea what this text is about. And I can see actually it's all about pain relief uh, for both adults and children. And really that's enough. That's all I'm gonna do here. You wanna do that in about one minute. Um, remember, you've only got 15 minutes for part A and we did some maths earlier and, and we were saying that there's less than a minute a question. So in this situation, you really don't wanna to spend too long on each text. These are the four texts that, you, that we've just looked at. What you notice is that they are in a certain order. They're not just randomly compiled. They're not just thrown together in any order. But if you think about the first text, really it was describing three different burns. You had superficial burns, you had full thickness burns, you had mixed depth burns. It was like an overview of different burns. Imagine you're working in a hospital, someone came up to you and they were severely burnt. You might wanna know what type of burn they have. It's kind of the first thing you do. In a way, it's just like, so this text is just like an overview of different burns. Once the, you've seen the patient and you know what type of burn they have, the next thing you might want to do is actually treat the patient. And that's what text B was about, is more about treatment. You're actually hydrating uh, the patient. After the patient's been hydrated, it moved on to management and actually managing the burn, dressing the burn, for example. And after that, you had pain relief as well. Um, again, this is kind of related to treatment. You can see this, the text, they're in logical order. You're starting with an overview, an assessment, it moved to treatment, moved to medication, and then it kind of, it moved to pain relief as well. So that can help you as well. So remember the texts are normally placed in a certain order. Okay, this is the tricky part because we're gonna try to actually do this now. Um, but you're going to do this without looking at the text. So this is really quite challenging. We're going to do the first part of the, um, of the exam paper. We're going to do the matching questions. These, in this exam, it's this paper, it's uh, questions one to five. If we just have a look at this. I'm just going to zoom in on the instructions. Just read this part here. It says, for each question, decide which text A, B, C, or D the information comes from. You may use any letter more than once. Okay, so we need to match the question with a text. That's what you're doing. Um, but you're gonna work from memory. And let's see how you go with it. So you're just gonna have 10 seconds to look again at the text, just to remind yourself what the texts are about. And then let's see how we do, how we go with the questions. Okay, this is text A. If you just quickly want to skim read this text. Okay, this is text B, just 10 seconds to skim read the text. Okay, text C. And finally, text D. Okay. 
Okay, so um, let's try this now. You're going to have now 10 seconds. You'll see the question. You've got 10 seconds really working from memory um, to get the answer. You need to write A, B, C or D. Question one. 10 seconds. Question two, 10 seconds. Question three. And question for 10 seconds. Okay. Um, okay, guys, that was tough again, because of course, in the exam, you will have the text booklet with you. Uh, we're working from memory. And really why we're doing this is just to show you that if you can actually really understand what the text is about, you can kind of get the answer um, really just from looking at the questions. But it is, of course, in the exam, you will have the text booklet with you. So, so don't worry if you found this difficult. It was incredibly difficult. This was your first question, uh, age-related considerations for initial treatment of burns. That might have helped you initial treatment um, that word, so if you remember the four texts, how they were grouped, initial treatment, probably it'll be text A or B. Uh, and also the word age related might help you as well. So actually text B, age related, you can see stuff here. It was about treatment, fluid resuscitation, uh, age related, and it had information for both adults and children as well. So you just needed to write B in your answer. Question two, this is a little bit more difficult. The risks involved in certain treatments, it was possibly text B, C or D because they were all kind of related to treatment uh, and, and management. Risks involved um, in text C actually was the answer. You would have to um, skim read looking for certain risks. Here they talked about debridement or blisters um, and the risk of breaking a blister, removing a blister. So actually the answer was C, that's all you needed to write. Question number three, uh, when to start thinking about specialist treatment options. So again, you're gonna know it's text B, C or D. Um, when, okay, you, it's kind of talking about time, specialist treatment options, these are the things you're looking out for. You can see it was actually in text D, review in 72, sorry, review uh, in 72 hours. Um, that's when you start thinking about specialist treatment options. So you just needed to write D for question three. And finally, question four, how to categorize the severity of a burn. I think the word categorize is really important because you might remember text A, had different categories. Um, in fact, there were three different categories. So you would know the answer. It has to be text A. And these are your three categories. OK, that isn't easy, but in the exam, you will have your text booklet with you. Um, again, that's, this is where you kind of need to skim read because if you understand really what a text is about, it does make the questions a, a little bit easier. But let's keep going. And, and something which is really important, if you can't get the answer, just keep moving. Um, don't worry if you're stuck. Go, go back to the question, but don't lose time. It's so important. Often you'll see an answer a bit later on. You might not get answer question number three, but then when you're doing question number seven, you see something and think, oh, I remember that's question number three and you can just go back. Uh, but don't stop working. That's the important thing. Just keep, keep moving. Otherwise, you're going to end up losing time and you don't want to do that. 
Okay, they were matching questions. And we're now gonna look at gap four questions. These are the second set of questions on the exam paper. And again, I'm just gonna zoom in on the instructions. It says complete each of the sentences with a word or a short phrase from one of the texts. Each question may include words, numbers, or both. You can see I've highlighted a couple of words there. Um, it says a word or a short phrase. It doesn't say how many words. It could be two words, three, possibly even four, um, but it's gonna be a short phrase, or it may just be one word, or it may include numbers as well. Okay, the principle is the same. You're still gonna be skimming and you're still gonna be scanning. This time it's not too bad um, because as you've just seen, you're gonna see the text. So actually in the exam, you've got to find the text first, and then you're gonna be scanning for information. Here, I've kind of given you the text. So you're really just gonna be scanning for specific information. You've only got 10 seconds per question though. So you've really got to be quick. Okay, guys, good luck. This is question one. 10 seconds. Question two. Ten seconds. Okay, and question number three. Only 10 seconds. Okay, guys, um, uh, one more. And again, only 10 seconds. Okay, let, let's see how you got on. Um, in the exam, it's a bit more tricky because you're going to have to find the text first. You need to think, is this text, is it really about treatment? Is this about management? Um, is this an overview? Um, so you really got to identify which text it is. So in a way, we kind of speeded this up by giving you the text. But once you had the text, that's where you're gonna to have to scan. And let's have a look at what words to really scan for here. This is question number one. Um, with a gap fill, you can guess grammatically what type of answer you need. Uh, we've got the word, well, it's a noun. Um, you're gonna experience something and all we really know it's gonna be a noun, maybe some kind of, of, of symptom maybe. Um, I looked for the word third degree burns. I thought that was important. So I just scanned for this and I saw it there with number two. Once I saw number two, I looked at other words here. It says a great deal of shrinkage and also recovering. You can find these words in the final bullet point and you can see how important synonyms are. The word recovering and healing, kind of fairly similar. Here it says a great deal of shrinkage in the text, considerable contraction. Actually, it's the same thing, a great deal, considerable shrink, uh, contract. So you can just see how important synonyms are. And when you're scanning, you need to be aware, aware of that. It was fine when I scanned for third degree burns because I found the word third degree. But when I scanned for recover, it wasn't there. But I always, I had in my mind synonyms or even antonyms as we saw earlier. So it's just something to be aware of. Okay, but at least I know here is the answer and I had to read that bullet point very carefully. And when you do, the answer you find is scarring. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. You should call burn injuries by taking off any, okay, or jewelry that the patient is wearing. 
So we know really the word taking off and wearing, it's going to be some kind of clothing item or, or something that you wear on, on, your, on your body, a hat. It could be anything really. I mean, here we have the word jewellery as well. Um, so I know it's going to be a noun. It's going to be a thing that I wear. Looking for words to scan for. Cool burn injuries. Uh, I saw the word calling. Uh, remove jewellery. Here it says taking off and remove. Again, you can see how important synonyms are. And the word jewellery, it's actually there. So I know I've got the right area. I read number three very closely. And that was your answer. Hot clothing. Question number three, uh, again, it's the same kind of thing. The patient may require a something. I know it's going to be a noun. Um, and the word booster is also quite important. It's going to collocate. It's probably going to go with booster. Um, so that word could be important. I was aware of that. I looked for words to scan for. And the first word I looked for was immunize. Now, the, grammatically, it's slightly different. It's changed from a verb to a noun. Immunized has become immunization. But once I saw it, I read closely and you can see synonyms again, may require, becomes if necessary. So you just got to read closely again. <coughs> and again, that word booster, well, you get a tetanus booster. Sometimes we say a tetanus shot. Um, so I know the answer is going to be uh, tetanus. Okay, let's keep working and go on to number four. A really similar kind of thing here. Classification of burn injuries depends on the amount of something caused. Well, it's going to be a noun. Again, all I know is I'm looking for a noun. Words to scan for. First word I looked was classification, and it's there in the first sentence. It changes from a noun to a verb. But once I saw that word, I read closely. I saw burn injuries. Depends on, <coughs> excuse me, becomes according to. How much the amount of. You can see how similar it is. In fact, the question is almost identical to the, that very first sentence. It's just been expressed in a different way. Uh, and as you read closely, that was the answer, tissue damage. So again, you can just see how important uh, synonyms are and also grammar as well, how a verb changes to a noun or a noun may change to an adjective uh, or a verb to an adjective. It's something to be aware of. Okay. So the final set of questions are short answer questions. And the principle now is the same. You've got to find the text. And once you find the correct text, you then got to scan for certain information. Um, but you've got to be clear on what the question is. Sometimes people, they do the hard part. They find the right text. They scan for the right words. But when they read for detail, they don't really read closely because I haven't really paid attention to the question. So let's practice some short answer questions. Um, very similar to before. Um, you're gonna have 10 seconds to answer the questions. Not a lot of time, I know, but you're gonna be given the text. So these are the last set of questions. I'm gonna zoom in on the instructions. Just read. It says answer each of the questions with a word or short phrase from one of the texts. Each answer may include words, numbers, or both. So again, it's a word, it's a short phrase. You're not writing a whole sentence. It's really not what they want. Um, and they all come from the text. Remember, your answers need to be spelt correctly because you are copying. Um, and again, you might write numbers, you might write words and numbers together. And it's just something to be aware of. Okay, guys, so let's do a bit of practice. Um, you're gonna see the, the text. You're only gonna have 10 seconds though to answer the question. It's the same kind of thing. 
Think about what type of answer you need. Think about what words you're going to be scanning for. Think about synonyms. Think about antonyms as well. Okay, this is the first question. And this is the text. Only 10 seconds. Number two. Remember in the exam, you, you would have to find the text here. Um, you can probably see attaching a drip. You might remember something about an IV uh, resuscitation, hydration. So you may hopefully remember that was text B. Okay, got 10 seconds. Okay, this is question number three. And again, the word analgesic, it kind of guides you. It's telling you which text to go for, uh, to go to. You might remember text D was about analgesics. Okay, only got 10 seconds. Okay. Okay. This is the last question we're going to look at. Ten seconds. Okay, how did you get on with that? we have a look together. This is question number one. In the case of mixed ep burns, and hopefully you remember by now that this is text A, because text A was an overview of different types of burns. And also once you start reading part A, the, the more time that passes, the more familiar you become with the texts. So hopefully by this stage, you kind of know I need to go to text A to get the answer here. Mixed depth burns, uh, what factor? This is really important. Again, the type of answer, what factor to thing you're looking for, and you need to write down the factor. Um, mixed depth burns, you, can, you know to go straight to number three. Okay, local treatment, you can see the word there. And then you just got to really read closely, um, read carefully that final sentence at the bottom. The factor is thickness. And that's all you need to write, just thickness. Question number two, what is the maximum number of tries recommended for attaching a drip at the scenes of a burns incident. Okay, so if you think about the answer, it says what, it's gonna be a thing again, and that's what you're gonna write. Uh, the maximum number of tries, that's really the answer they're looking for. And that's also what you're looking for as well as you scan through the text. Attaching a drip as well. Um, so you can see here intravenous fluids similar to attaching a drip. And if you read carefully, it says here, transfer should not be delayed by more than two cannulation attempts. So attaching a drip, cannulation, um, different words, but similar meaning. Um, so again, just being aware of this kind of synonymous kind of language. Um, and the answer is two. And that's all you need to write, either the number two, or you could spell the word two. Number three, again, it says what, so it's a thing. That's what you're looking for. Uh, what analgesic, it's gonna be a type of analgesic, an additional analgesic. So that's what you're looking for. That's what you're gonna write down. 
text D, we said before, is all about analgesics. So we know go straight to text D. Um, and it's got it there. The heading can really help you. Adult analgesic guidelines. We know that's the right text. And words we were looking for, moderate pain relief. And it's there in the table. And once you're in the table, um, in the first instance for a patient, in the first inst instance, it's tramadol. And that's all you need to write. You don't need to write the dosage or the frequency. It just wants the name of that analgesic. This is question number four. Again, thinking about the type of answer, it says after how long, how long it's gonna be time. That's really what they're after now. So you know this is gonna to, going to be something to do with time. Um, pain relief regime be reevaluated. Okay, pain relief, again, it's analgesic, isn't it? So you know to go to text D. Uh, and then you're looking for this word reevaluate here. I've highlighted this sentence because it says analgesia should be reviewed. It's a synonym for reevaluate, very similar words. Um, analgesia should be reviewed after 72 hours uh, and adjusted according to pain scores. Okay, and that's all you need to write, 72 hours. You could write the word, you could spell the word if you like, but that will take a little bit longer. So it's fine. Um, you're just gonna, you can just write down the numbers and that's perfectly fine. Okay, but again, just with these questions, just think about the type of answer. Um, it really helps if you understand the question, it's so important. Like I say, people, they, they do the hard work. Sometimes nurses and doctors who I work with, they actually do the skimming and the scanning really well, but they haven't written the question. And sometimes the answers, they, ha they haven't read the question carefully. And sometimes the answers are a little bit too long. Um, it's like in this question here, tramadol. If you had written tramadol 50, 100 milligrams, four times daily, you wouldn't have got a point. That's not what they asked you. Um, so you've got to really copy carefully, just really be clear on, on what they're asking you and what kind of information you need to get the answer. Okay. So just to kind of recap on, on some things that, that we've looked at in, in this lesson today, we talked about really skim reading. Um, that's the first reading skill you're tested on. You've got 15 minutes. You don't have time to read every single word. Um, it's worth taking maybe a minute, certainly not more than two, but just take a minute just to get a quick overview of the four texts or the three texts. Um, think about the layout. What is it? Are these paragraphs? Uh, are the, is this a table? It might be a flow chart, could be a combination of both. If it's a table, what is it showing me? Um, but don't read everything here. Just look at the layout. That can really help you. Headings and subheadings are often really important and they can help you as well. So look, pay attention to headings and subheadings. Think about bullet points, about words which have been highlighted or words which are in bold. Um, they can always help you as well. So something else we talked about earlier, if you're not sure what the text is about, even when you look at it, just read the first sentence. Sometimes read the last sentence. Uh, that might help you. Uh, but certainly don't read everything. You just don't have time to do that. So when you skim read, these are different ways of skim reading. And, and the idea is that you just get an overview of what the text is about. Um, also, as you kind of skim read, just be aware because this can kind of really help you as you're doing the exam paper. Uh, notice when information is grouped together. Um, it could be anything. You might have information about shops, you might have information about clothing, and you kind of just make a mental note of that because it may come in useful later on. Okay, and then think about scanning as well. Um, Highlight words to scan for, um, underline words in the, on the question paper, um, and that's what you're gonna do. And think about synonyms we talked about or synonymous language. So words which are similar, 
you may see one word, but it won't always be the same in the text. So you might need to be aware of synonyms, synonymous language, also antonyms as well. Sometimes the word is the opposite. They change the question to the text. Um, we also saw how words were grammatically changed as well. We saw how a verb was changed to a noun or an adjective was changed to a verb. So be aware of grammatical differences. Um, but it is important to understand that, that you do need to scan for, for keywords. Um, and be clear on the words you scan for as well. Think about the questions, really understand the questions. Think about what they're asking you for. And that can really help you when you select words to scan for. So as I said, read the questions clearly, you know, make sure you understand the questions. It's so important. Sometimes you'll see when it says what, it's gonna be a thing. If it says where, it's, it's a place. We saw the question where it says after how long, you know you're looking for a time. So make sure you do understand the questions clearly. Talked already about spelling. Um, you will lose marks, unfortunately, if you don't spell correctly. I know you're in an exam, I know you're under pressure, uh, but please do take care with your spelling. As I've said before, keep moving. Um, you've got to manage your time. If you can't find the answer to one question, let it go. Just go to the next one and the next one and the next one, then go back to any questions um, which you were not sure about or any answers you couldn't find, just go back to them. Like I said, often as time goes on, you become more and more familiar with the four texts as well. Um, so don't worry, don't panic if you can't find an answer at the beginning. Often you'll just come across that answer a bit later on. But the important thing is just to keep working. You really don't have time just to spend too long on one question. Okay. Okay, guys, so um, it's pretty much it coming to the end. I hope you found that useful. If you do need support with reading, uh, with reading part A, check out um, our website on wles.net. There's an online reading course. Um, you'll watch a number of video lessons. We talk about skimming and scanning. There's stuff for reading part B and reading part C as well. It's a really nice online course as well. Um, so if you do need support with reading, uh, check that out, wles.net. Have a look at our website because uh, you'll find stuff there which can help you. Of course, there's always stuff online. I mean, there's, there's other papers as well. There's a listening paper we have as well. Again, you'll watch video lessons. You'll look at strategies on how to tackle the listening paper, different methods. Um, and you get tests as well. You've got six practice tests with this paper as well. Um, and don't forget, we are um, premium preparation providers, so our materials are really good quality as well. Reading, listening, there's writing stuff if you need support with writing. Um, here you work with a tutor as well. You get really detailed feedback. Um, it's all there on the website. The writing correction service, if you just want your letters marked, with feedback, then this is a really good course for you as well. Um, it's all there, wles.net. Um, stuff on speaking as well. Again, you'll work with a tutor, you have video lessons, and then you're gonna work with a, a tutor and have some practice. And if you prefer, you can do packages as well. These are really inclusive. Stuff for nurses and doctors. The platinum package is probably the most inclusive and one of the most popular that we do because there's pretty much everything in there. So um, look, just check it out, wles.net. There's a whole load of stuff there. This is who we are in case you don't know. That's me on the left, Beth is in the middle. Um, she was with you last week and I think hopefully Beth will be with you next week doing stuff on writing and the exam criteria. On the right of your screen is Catalin. Um, and Kathleen, she's a OET uh, exam invigilator here in London. And so this is our OET team here, get in touch because we love talking about OET. And if you just want some advice and just want to talk about OET, please, you know, just get in touch. And we're more than happy to talk to you. So we've got loads of stuff online, of course, because of the situation with Corona, um, all of our courses are now online. 
but we are still open for face-to-face -face courses. So if you're here in London, uh, please do pop in, give us a call, um, send us an email, or like I said, just pop in, come in, have a cup of tea with us. We are still open, we are still running face-to-face -face classes. Um, so if that's what you're interested in as well, please do uh, come in. Okay, look, I hope you found that useful, guys. Um, it's been lovely working with you all. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well. Stay safe um, and stay well. Work hard and um, all the best with, with the OT. I'll see you again. Like I said, next week, Beth will be with you. Okay, take care. Look after yourself, guys.